What's going on guys, Joe from Total Justice Gaming here with a deck update. Uh, this is going to be my Zodiac deck. I vamp, revamped it into the IF version, or the IF. Kind of don't know which, what way it's called, but I'm calling it the IF. Uh, the flag is still my guard flag, the buddy is now the IF. And we'll jump right into it. So first off we're going to be running Ghost 4 IF. Uh, I have has the same stats as all Zodiac, so it's a 7-2-5. Uh, a gets Penetrate. The call cost is... Pay 2 gauge and put a card from your... Uh, put a card from your drop zone into this card. So if my uh, flag is Legend World, it gets Penetrate and Move. Or if it's Star, I get Move. And then Counter, Gravity Rest, choose a monster or item on your field. Uh, discard a card, pay a life, and pay a gauge, and rest that card has got some cards. So this is the the best version of Zodiac thus far because the gravity rest is not only counter speed, but it can now target items. So we're running for that. Uh, moving right along, we are playing four of the ES versions, uh, just because the ES is pay two, uh, then put one card from my drops under the soul, uh, when it attacks a size two, it locks down, uh, when it attacks, choose a size two or less monster on the field, and it can't stand, so it locks down the opponent's field for attacking. Uh, with one of the other dragon arms, it gets really, really ridiculous, and of course it has its standard gravity rest. Uh, for the final two Zodiacs, we are running High Eliminator. We're going to be running two of that. The reason for the High Eliminator is because of the burn. Uh, when it enters the field, if I have a Legend World, I can uh, put two cards from the opponent's gate from the drop zone. This is a Star Dragon, uh, Star Dragon World deck, so I get to burn the opponent for two damage when it comes into play, and of course it has your standard gravity rest. So we're running a total of ten Zodiacs. Uh, next up in the deck, we're running Meteor Arms buy a show. Uh, the reason for this is this is none of my cards on the, my field can be nullified. If it's in the soul of my Zodiac, none of its abilities can be nullified. So we're running three of these to ensure the nullification, or anti-nullification rather. Uh, followed by three Drag Solars. Uh, the Drag Solar can technically be counted as a Zodiac because it lets me go get a Zodiac out of the discard pile by paying its cost just for putting it into play. And once in the soul of a Neo Dragon, uh, when it attacks, I can pitch a card to draw a card. So this lets me filter through my deck, and it gives me technically three more Zodiacs. I'll play in a moment. Uh, next up, we're playing four Nebulosas. This gives me double attack. Two uh, Meteor Arms. Gravidia Joe. I really apologize, guys, that these names are a little out there for me. Uh, when it's discarded from the hand, you may pay a gauge if I do uh, put this into the soul of a size 3 monster. Uh, I'm really using it for the bottom effect, uh, which says if it's in the soul of a size 3 Neo Dragon, it's plus 3,000 power. Uh, we're, of course, going to be running at least two Hind Lances just to prevent the um, final phase. Then for weapons, we're still going to run three Leg Blade Avenger because it gives us gauge and it potentially lets us control the board by blowing it up. We now add two of the new impacts, which is Super Gravity Device Gravitron Generator. Uh, I may only play this if I have a monster with Zodiac uh, on my field. Uh, pay two gauge, choose one of the two following. All cards uh, on your opponent's field cannot stand during their next phase, or deal damage plus one equal to the number of rested cards on the opponent's field. This is really important because this also counts the opponent's weapon, so I could potentially be doing five, five damage, and against stuff that's coming out soon like uh, Chaos, I could potentially be doing six damage since they may potentially have two monsters on there. Uh, for spells, I'm running for Mind Faker. Uh, Mind Faker lets me either grab a, s if I have a star on my field for this turn, uh, nullify the abilities of the monsters on the opponent's field, uh, or if I have a Neo Dragon in play, 
I can get a card from the drop zone and put it into the soul of a monster on the field. So let's me go get anything out of the drop zone, put it into Zodiac, keep the soul nice and healthy, or I can um, nullify stuff on the opponent's board, which that's really important because Bots is out there and Thor is out there, so I can screw them over potentially. Following that, we are running four Divine Guidance, a very typical shield in Zodiac. Uh, following that, we are running three Illusionary Deities. This lets me keep uh, Zodiac on the board. It would be destroyed and gain life. On top of that, we're also running two Mars Barriers to prevent uh, attacks from happening unless we link attacks. Running three future astrologies for the draw power lets me at the counter speed get two cards. Uh, two, three Lunovas uh, for their abilities, which is cast cost, discard a card from your hand. Uh, if the card discarded, uh, pay this cost as a legend world flag, I can gain a life and draw a card. If it's star dragon world, which it's much easier to plot both effects, as so the majority of my dragon arms are star and neat. Uh, Legend World Star Dragon World uh, Dual Worlding. Uh, I can gauge one and destroy a size two on the opponent's board. And then finally, we're running two of the Buddy Fight Triple T Gara, which is a another version of uh, Uninvited Deity Inspector, which lets me go get a Zodiac from my deck and call it. And that right there, guys, is the Star Dragon World Zodiac deck update. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.